Hello guys, so welcome back to our series of multi-stage amplifiers. So uh, in this recording, we're gonna do or basically verify what we learned last lecture in uh, multi-stage amplifiers, but using multi-sim. Because you need to see this, you need to see the numbers and you know be more convinced by the result and the analysis that we did last time, okay? Also, you need to see that really, if you have uh, a mismatch between the load, our load, and the you know the output resistance of the amplifier, like common emitter, for example, then you you could see no gain, maybe attenuation, which is completely opposite of the concept of an amplifier. Okay, so the last example that we studied was a common emitter followed by a common collector. Okay, then a small load. Okay, this load was 50 ohms, very small, and but very practical because speakers, you know, usually if you have a sound system, you start by a mic. This mic receives a sound, sound from you know a human or something, you know, and the amplifier will increase the level of this, uh, you know, uh, sound and send it to a speaker. And the speaker usually have an input resistance of 50 ohms, around very small, basically. Okay. So we're gonna first verify that really if we exclude the common collector stage, the second stage, the, we would have no gain, okay? This is our analysis and we're gonna verify it using multi -set. Then we're gonna add the common collector stage which will isolate or decouple the very small resistance, output resistance or load from, you know, the, the common collector or common emitter, you know, stage. And that will preserve almost, you know, the gain or at least, you know, uh, preserve the property of having ego, uh, voltage gain in the circuit or the design. Okay. So we're going to start by the common emitter stage by itself connected directly to the load. There is no, you know, common collector in between. Okay. And we're going to verify that there is no gain. So here was the analysis of the single stage common emitter amplifier. We reached the conclusion based on our analysis that AV is basically, which is V output over V input, is minus beta RC parallel RL over R bar. Okay. And why it was very, you know, uh, very small gain because RL was very small compared to RC. RC. In that example, it was uh, 6.8 kilo ohms. RL was just 50 ohms, which is 0 0.05 kilo ohms. Just compare them, you know. So RC barrel RL will be approximately equal to RL. Okay. And RL very small. That's why beta RL over R by will be also very small. R by was four kilos, you know, for, for around 5,000, you know, ohms or five kilos here. And the numerator here, beta RL is 100 multiplied by 0.05, it's just a five. So five divided by, you know, uh, 4.8 kilo ohms. So it's around one, you know, one point something, 1.1 approximately in that case. So we should verify, AV equal to one means the O is almost like the input. So we should see, you know, uh, almost identical signals at the input and the output. So let's run this. This is basically the common emitter, exactly the same circuit that we studied. Okay. Same values, I didn't change anything. And here is the load of a 50 ohm. Okay. Here you have a, a current probe just to, uh, to measure the IB to verify this number. Another current probe to verify this number. Okay. And this is the differential probe here to measure VBE. Okay, uh, one thing here, I uh, these are, you know, very close to the values that we did in the lecture, last lecture, okay, uh, but with very slight change because I, as usual, you know, uh, in multi-sim, we use VBE that came in our analysis, that came out of this differential probe. We don't use the uh, assumption of 0.7. So as assumption of 0.7, we use it, you know, for theoretical analysis, you know, if you have a problem, you know, exam or something, yeah, use 0.7. Of course, in your other company, you wanna get some fast, you know, 
approximation or estimations for your uh, design, use point seven. That's okay. Uh, but you know, because of the, introdu the introduction of beta and the current amplification, usually BGT transistors or circuits are sensitive to the change in VBE because of the beta, you know, amplification. So any 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 error will be multiplied by one hundred. But in this circuit, it's okay because, as we learned, you know, the introduction of RE here makes this sensitivity less, which is good. Okay, so you're gonna you will not see much change if you use 0.7 or use what come what comes out of the broken. Okay, so if you compare these numbers by the numbers we get in the last lecture, you you find them very close, very close. Okay, so let's run and see. Uh, so let's start by examining, you know, the numbers first. Let's start, for example, by IB here. Yeah, IB is uh, IDC. It's four five point four four microamperes. Very close to this guy. Very close. The difference is just a point one. Okay. BBE, which is a differential probe here. You know, it is, look at the DC value here, 0.61. So, you know, 0.1 also difference to the 1.7. And I see in here, so it is five, uh, 530 microamperes, it's just, you know, 0.53, you know, or 0.51, you know, uh, 0.53 here, you know, milliamperes. So they are very close as usual, okay? And R by you can just calculate it using uh, the equation, which is uh, R by is equal to uh, VT uh, over I, uh, IB. Yeah, VT over IB, okay? VT is 26 millivolt, and IB is here, 5.3 you know, microamperes, so you can just calculate it very easily. Okay, guys, that's for R by. If you, you know, plug and play here with the numbers, you're going to find EV and you kind of find it 1.2. Now let's verify it's really 1. 1 means there is no gain. The output is almost equal to the end. So let's here go to the, you know, this guy here, the oscilloscope. And yes. So here is the output is, is the green signal. Let's reverse the. And the input is so the output is the wire is green, and the input here is, is red. So, so the output is a green signal, the red is the input signal. And one thing here is that you should verify first before you say they are equal that the scale is the same and the scale is the same. Okay, because I already did this experiment before, so I know they are, they are the same. But always look at the scale. Okay, good. So yes, they are very, you know, uh, very close. You can just look at the, you know, maximums here. So the maximum on channel A is for, uh, of course, they are out of phase. That's why you have a negative and here positive. It's around, you know, 498 uh, 98 microvolt. And this is guys 501. Very, so they are very close to each other. And the output is slightly, the output in the channel B, is slightly bigger than or greater than, you know, the input. And that's why here we have one point something, you know, it's not just one or, or point nine, you know, it's one point something, you know. So one thing here, guys, you know, uh, it's it should be here, is there is a very small type, which should, should be minus 1.1 because they are out of phase, okay? So again, no uh, amplification, okay? So we need to solve this problem now. We need something that isolate the small load from the common emitter amplifier. And this is basically, uh, you know, the common collector stage that we're gonna add, okay? So let's explore now, you know, the what this added uh, stage did to the amplification, it basically modifies the amplification. Let's compare the two formulas. So the first formula minus beta RC 
barrel was RN. Here is minus beta RC, but barrel with all such stuff here. And you have the same, you know, so everything is the same, except that we replace our L with all such resistance, okay? And if you go, you know, two observations here. First of all, you know, this term, R1 barrel, R2 barrel, R by plus beta plus one, R E barrel, R L, is much bigger than R L, okay? I'm gonna leave this to you, but it's much bigger than R L. You can, for example, estimate, you can say that R1 and R2 was very big, very large, just approximate to infinity. So if you have uh, two barrel resistors, one infinity and one whatever the value less than infinity, then the overall will be this small resistor, okay? So if, if we neglect R1 and R2, it will be R by plus beta plus one R E barrel R L, okay? So, uh, that's really now easy to see that really this, this term is bigger than RL. So, and remember, the, we didn't get enough uh, amplification because of RL, it was very small compared to RC. RC was 6.8 kilo ohms, RL was 0 0.05 kilo ohms or 50 ohms. That's why we have this, uh, you know, very small amplification. Okay, so we, the addition of the common character stage could increase, you know, or you know, the, the second term RL. Okay. So, uh, or you can say, in other words, uh, it reduces RO. Okay. So, uh, another way to look at this circuit is that RL is much smaller than the output resistance of the circuit. And the output resistance of the circuit is RC. Okay. So, uh, using the second approach, adding the CC, you will find that RO is much, you know, smaller than RC. Okay, that's why it's it's it's, you know, uh, it will it, we will have gain now. Okay, so I'm gonna leave these details to you because we didn't calculate RO, but you can do it yourself. Okay, this is just an exercise for you. So we should see bigger gain, bigger overall gain. Another way to, to look at the gain is that, as we say, once you have a cas cascaded stages of amplifiers, then the overall gain is basically the amplification of the first stage multiplied by the amplification of the second stage, third stage, you know, whatever. So in here we have just two stages. So we can say that AV is, which is equal to VO over V input, equal to VO2 over V mode one because VO of the circuit of the overall circuit is basically the second stage output, VO2. And the input of the overall circuit, the cascading circuit is basically the input voltage of the first stage V input one. And then we can multiply by VO over VO, V1 over VO1. And remember the output of the second stage, the first stage is the input of the second stage. So we can replace this VO1 here by VN two, then we can rewrite this into that way here. It will be VO1 over V1, which is AV1, multiplied by VO2 over V1, which is AV2. Okay, that's basically the, the derivation. Why the overall gain is just the multiplications of the gains of individual stages, okay? So we're gonna do two stuff here in this experiment. We're gonna uh, have uh, an oscilloscope that measures VO, the very, still, the very last output of the circuit, uh, v, which is VO2 or VO, and the very, the very first input of the circuit, which is V input one or V input, and divide them by each other. This should give us, you know, this value around 37 or something. This is a theoretical value that we calculate here basically using the values that we have. Okay, and we're gonna have another two oscilloscopes. One which measures the output of the first stage and the input of the first stage. Another oscilloscope that, uh, that measures the output of the second stage and the input of the second stage. This will measure the AV1 basically, and this is measure AV2. Multiplying them to each other should give us AV. So let's, let's add these two cells here. So let's add, you know, another two rows and, you know, And the multiplication of both should give us, you know, 37. So let's now do that. So uh, 
let's you know, go to the second project. It's a very big circuit. So I'm gonna, you know, hide this and enlarge this, you know, uh, So here it is, very big. So let's first zoom into the circuit. So where is the first stage? Here is the first stage, this barking. Okay. And the input of the first stage is basically the input of the whole circuit. And the output of the first stage is the input of the second. Here you have two capacitors in series. I'm not gonna explain why it's not just one capacitor like the example we did. So um, in the analysis, they are the same. But when you measure the stuff in the, in the lab, they are all the same. If we just keep one capacitor, when we try to measure AV1 or AV2, the individual stages amplification, you would have some DC in the, in the output or the input, you know, whatever. But we can, Reduce, uh, eliminate this DC by having two capacitors like this in series, okay? And taking the, the probe, putting the probe of the oscilloscope between the two capacitors. Now we can isolate the DC of the first stage from the probe and the DC also the second stage from the probe. So you should see, otherwise you're gonna see, you know, horrible stuff. <laughs> Basically you will not see the, you know, the, in the, the output and you, you might think there's no output or something wrong. Okay, because of the DC. So, uh, and if you look at the values here, the values are just of the capacitors. It's, it's 90, uh, 940, which is double of uh, 47 microfarads. Okay, and because if you have two capacitors in series, the, I'm sorry, the equivalent is, uh, is like parallel, parallel equivalent, C1, C2 over C1 plus C2. Okay, which is basically because they are equal uh, C over two, which is, it will be 40, uh, 47, uh, 470 microfarad, 470 microfarad. Okay, guys, where are the oscilloscopes? So that guy here measures the overall gain. So look, one channel has the input, the very first input. Another channel here has the very last output, TO2. This guy is measuring AV2. Look. The input is the input of the common collector. This is the common collector stage. And the output is this one here, the green, I'm sorry. Yeah, the green, okay, which is, you know, the very last output of our array. Here is our array, the 50 ohms, okay. Uh, and this guy is measuring the input uh, the AV1. So let's mark this, you know, with another color like, uh, for example, you know, blue. So one signal here is the output of the first stage, and the second signal is just the input of the first stage, which is the input of the, uh, the whole circuit. So let's run and see. Okay, it's not clear now because the volt is very small, so we're gonna zoom. First, let's check the DC values. As we say, the DC should be the same because one, the DC in, in, the, in, in the DC analysis, we remove the capacitors. The capacitors are open. If you open the cap, if you consider them, them as open, you're gonna have a separate stages, isolated stages. So the DC analysis is just the same. And this is what we verified last time in, in the lecture. Last lecture. So if we look here at the, the values in the table, look, IB532, 5.32, and IB1 and IB2. Remember the difference between the two circuits is just the RC. So there is no RC in the common collector stage. Also, in calculating, calculating IC or IB, we don't depend on RC at all. That's why we have IB1 equal to IB2 theoretically, IC1 is equal to IC2 theoretically, and R by, of course, it's VT over IB, which they should be also, you know, the same, okay? So if you look here, this is uh, IB1, here it is. Let's, uh, you know, zoom.
that is uh, 5.44, very close, uh, micro embeds. So the value here was, let's check, 5.3, okay. Here is IB2, the second stage here, 5.28, you know, they should be the same, but they're very, you know, uh, because it's practical considerations, you know, because these capacitors are not perfectly, you know, uh, isolating the DC. We model them as open circuit in DC, but they are not so, you know, still there is some, you know, uh, resistance that allows, this very big resistance that allows some DC from the first stage to the second stage and you know, vice versa. Uh, I see, I see here, you know, 5.31, uh, 5.34, very close to each other and very close as well to the values we have here. 5.22. Okay. Now let's uh, see the gains. Let's start by EV1. Or let's start by EV, the overall gain. Here is the overall gain. Remember here, don't give a, you know uh, some judgment before you look at the, yes, the output is bit bigger than the input. But that might not be the case if you have the you know different scales. You should look at it as a scale and verify by the markers. Okay, so let's start by measuring the input, which is the red signal. So you know the max. Of course, the input is just the input of the of the of the of the, of the, of the whole circuit, which which we know already. You know, so it's known here. Look, okay, guys, this is our input. So we we set it to half milli volt peak. Okay, so if we go back here, it's yeah, it's a half milli. It's a very fi around 500 mil micro, which is half a milli a volt. And the output is minus 16 because you know uh, at the same peak here in the input, it's a it's a value of you know minimum in the output. And if we change and verify this from the max, so we're gonna put this as B. And we'll go to max, it is, you know, 18. So if we divide them by each other, by each other, so 18 divided by around half, it's 36, right? And remember the minus here because of the phase shift. So it's minus 36. If we go back here, very close to what we did, you know, or get theoretically. Okay, now let's measure EV1 and EV2 and verify that when we multiply them by each other, they should give us 36. Let's do that. So we're gonna go back here. Let's measure EV1 first. Again, don't judge until you measure because of the skill is different between both. So the input here, let's check. The input is red, the output is, is blue. One may say, oh, the, the input is bigger than the input. No, the output, no, my friend, because the, the scale is different, it's 200. The division is 200 micro. The division of the output, the, the blue signal is 20 milli. It's much bigger than 200, okay? It's 20 milli over 200 micro, which is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 milli. So this is equivalent to 0 0.2 milli, okay? So let's measure the input, which is the red signal. Again, the input of the first stage is basically the input of the whole circuit, which is 500 microvolt or half a millivolt, which is, you know, as you see here, very close to 400. So let's change the trace, channel B, and measure it. It is the max. Oh. 35.2, okay. When you multiply, let's do it approximately, you know. So when you divide 35 milli by half milli, this it's like multiplying 35 by two, which is 70. Okay, so it's about 70. I'm, we are not doing exact stuff here. We are just, you know, uh, so let's put 70. And they are out of phase, so it's minus 70. Around, of course, this is around. So let me put you know, something to say it's around. Okay, this is AV1, remember this. Now AV2, 
second is the scope. Wow. So let's, oh, this is, yeah, here is, uh, yeah, the output is the green. The input is the orange. So let's uh, do the calculations here. So let's put the markers. Let's go to the max. So the output is the orange. Let's reverse it. So, which is the channel A? It's 35 millivolt, the max. And the input looks like it's, uh, out. first the input is, uh, and the output are in phase, okay? This, which is really good. So uh, the division should be positive. It's not like the input. Let's now check the output. And here is the output is less than the input. Look guys, the output is 18. So this is 18 approximately. This is 36 approximately. If we, if we multiply them by each other, it, 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 it gives us 0.5. So I have here another typo is, uh, because we did already calculated this. So these are the measured stuff. So, So we did this already. So last time uh, we have EV1 and this. So EV2 was 0.5. And EV1, let me check it very quick, was minus uh, 73.2. And we just verified it. It was around 70, very close. And that guy is around half, okay? Now, if you multiply half by 70, what, what is the half? It is 35. And remember the minus, there is a minus here. Minus 35, which is very close to EV. Okay. Again, guys, I'm not doing exact numbers here. I'm just making the picture closer to your mind. Okay. But of course, if you're going to write a report or something, you should put the exact numbers. Don't do approximations like me. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, that's basically, you know, the, uh, a verification, basically, for the common emitter, common collector multi-stage amplifiers. We did that theoretically last lecture, and now we did it also in multi-sim and verifies the result that we get uh, theoretically, okay? And they are, have a great match, basically. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and wait for the next video. Bye-bye.